Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to show you a pretty neat trick uh, called double camera raw processing. It's pretty pretty uh, invaluable in the HDR process to exploit as much dynamic range as you can from a single raw file. This was a single raw file taken at a pumpkin patch recently with my son, and if you ever go out with an 18-month-old, it's very difficult to try and set yourself up for great HDR photographs when uh, you're trying to chase around uh, a little guy um, who's uh, afraid of hens and chickens that are chasing after him on a pumpkin patch. So, you snap and you go, right? But you want them to look more HDR-like because this is kind of boring and you're an HDR artist, right? I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick called uh, double camera raw processing. Um, so what I like to do in camera raw is activate the shadow clipping warning you can click up there and do that, and the highlight clipping warning as I make my camera raw adjustments. So you'll see as I go along here, um, as I start to make modifications, especially to the blacks, that my shadows here are clipping a lot. They're turning into these blue massive messes. Uh, if you don't have your um, shadow clipping warning on, you don't know that this is happening. And what is happening is actually a negative thing, that you're, you're destroying. Uh, information that, that would have been there. It's no longer there. You're, uh, you're taking it too far and you're taking what was black and turning it into what Photoshop doesn't even recognize anymore as black. It just knows that it's too much. Same thing with the whites. If you've got too much, too much white you can uh, activate the highlight clipping shadow. I'm doing this on the fly with the U and O buttons on the keyboard. Um, it will show you where you're uh, clipping your highlights to, or what we like to call highlight blowouts in the HDR community. And you'll see that as you uh, modify your highlights and your shadows, or your blacks and your whites, you can see where you're clipping information and what you're where you are destroying. So those areas in particular are being uh, pretty much destroyed right now. When it comes to small little pixel stuff like that, I don't really mind too much, but when it comes to really big open areas, I don't like that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jack that clarity slider up. And you notice as we increase the clarity slider, it's also kind of in increasing our contrast a little bit. So when it does that, it's going to modify our shadows or our blacks as well. So we can go in there and tweak those out too. So that what you're doing is you're setting yourself up here to realize that every slider movement that you make is affecting the clippings of your, of your shadows and your highlights at some point depending on the sliders that you're moving here in this uh, main panel here. So I'll go ahead and open this um, because I've, I've taken this pretty far with the clarity slider pretty much all the way up now. Um, and it's still just, it's better. We've got some more contrast, we've got some more detail because of the clarity slider, but it's just not quite where I think it should be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up this image Now, in order to double process a uh, camera raw file, uh, or a raw file in camera raw, what you wanna do is go ahead and make all your modifications like you would on your raw file, and then you're gonna go to edit and go to preferences up here and go to camera raw. Now down here where it says automatically open all supported JPEGs and TIFFs, uh, sometimes this is, is deselected. I think by default these are deselected. So you have to go into Photoshop and say automatically open all supported TIFFs and automatically open all supported JPEGs in Camera Raw. So now I'm going to save this as a TIFF file. I'm going to call it pumpkin. And then I'm going to close this out. And when I open that TIFF file, it brings me into Camera Raw. Now, if we didn't have that selected before, it wouldn't do that. And you see, it's got all of my Camera Raw settings reset. So now I can take all those settings to another level that weren't there before. So I've got my clarity slider. I can hike it up a little bit more. Really get the edgy, gritty HDR feel out of this. I think these are called Cinderella pumpkins. And But note, as I make my modifications to my clarity slider, I'm also affecting the shadows also. I kind of like some of that shadow uh, being black back there, though it really pushes that pumpkin out a little bit further. So th there's one of those instances where you might want to keep it. 
I'll actually tone down the vibrance a little bit, maybe tone down the saturation a little bit because I want to make this a really dark looking picture. Now I'm going to open this picture and I'm going to take a look at what I have here. This was the original raw file pumpkin image. And now here is our double processed camera raw uh, pumpkin image. Give it that HDR look. Really just take all that information that's in that raw file and really exploit it, really grab it, pull it out, and get it to that next level without using any other software but Camera Raw. Again, this is www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Go ahead and play with some of those raw files.